Hey, welcome to this tutorial. Uh, today I will show you the most of the notes from the subcategory geometry in the system geometry notes in Blender. And let's get started. Let's open the Blender launcher or you can download the latest experimental build from blender.org. We will be using the newest Blender 3.4 alpha and let's open it. Now we are here in Blender and we can leave the cube we can delete everything else. With that, we can go into the Geometry Nodes editor and we can create a new node tree and collapsing the right side. We are here in the empty Geometry Nodes editor. As we discussed two videos before, this is here Geometry Nodes. This is a modifier. So in Geometry Nodes, you can manipulate the geometry of your object via several nodes that can play together. And this is basically geometry nodes. And here we have a empty geometry nodes tree. So the geometry will flow in, then it goes through our node tree and then it will go out. And everything that goes out of here will get displayed here in the viewport. And so we can manipulate the geometry here in the middle and we can do that with nodes. But how can we add nodes? We can add nodes here on the top left by clicking the add. And here are a bunch of nodes. But we also have a shortcut for this. It is shift and A. You can press that. And today this video should be about the geometry submenu of this whole add menu. And the first node we see is the bounding box. We can click that. And to have it function, we have to drag it over our noodle and we can see our noodle turns white and then we can release our mouse and it will already be connected in the middle here. And we can see also nothing changed and this is because we have already a cube and this node does nothing else than just taking a box and wrapping it as near as possible on our mesh. How can we see that? We can go into X-ray mode and into wireframe. And then we can take our original face here on the top and we can scale it down. And we can see geometry nodes puts this bounding box around here. And we can even manipulate our mesh. For instance, if we extrude this here, we can see Geometry Nodes takes a box and puts it as best as possible around our mesh. And we can do even more. That doesn't affect anything like this. And this is the bounding box. It's a pretty simple node. The next is the convex hole. And this is a similar node, but more complex. This is, this looks first of all like this. This is like if you are using a plastic bag and sucking all of the air out of it and then our object then looks like this and we can of course more manipulate our mesh here and it also works for vertices so if we will go into the vertice mode here and we will duplicate our, a vertex we can drag it out here and with that, we can define how our convex hull looks. A nice effect for this is if you are using, for instance, a volume, like if we will use a volume, a volume cube, and we will distribute points in it, distribute points in volume, then you can see we're getting interesting st structures here. And with that, you can create nice bricks like this. And the more points you have, the more defined is the object. And with that, you can create really nice effects. And the next node is the delete geometry node. And this node just explains it from its name. <laughs> This node deletes your geometry if you put it like this, but if you define a selection, so a mask, it will only 
delete the parts of your mesh where your selection takes effect. For example, if we will subdivide our mesh, so we have enough geometry a bunch of times, and for the selection we will take a noise texture, and we plug the effect into the selection, first of all nothing happens, and this is because our noise texture does nearly happen to go to go to a value of 1. So we need to have a color ramp to crank up the contrast and set it to constant. And now with this we can define here the clamping. With more resolution and a lower scale you can have also effects with this. And yeah, this node is for deleting parts of your mesh or whole objects or just deleting geometry as the name says. Let's delete everything again and let's go over to the next node which is the duplicate elements node and this is a really nice node because we can duplicate things from our mesh and then with the help of the duplicate index we can move every single duplicate somewhere else. So we want to duplicate our faces but now you say, yes, we can duplicate this, but nothing changes. So if you duplicate it twice, I don't see it two times. And this because it gets overlaid, overlapped. And so we have to move our mesh. And for this, we will already use the set position node. So the set position, we will always use the set position node if we want to move something. For this, we want to have a combine XYZ node and we want to have the duplicate index for the Z axis. And now we can see if we higher up the amount, we will get more of these objects or less. And the duplicate index just outputs us at the first duplication a value of zero so it gets moved up by an amount of zero additional and then the first duplicate has a value of one. So it gets one unit on top and so on and so forth. And this is the duplicate elements node and you can also limit it to vertices and everything you want to have. So the next node is the geometry proximity node. This is also a very cool node, probably the coolest node in here. Drag it here outside of the noodle and I want to not use our object here. I want to use a plane and for this I go into the mesh primitives and use a grid. Of course I want to have it scaled up a little bit so you guys can see what I'm doing. And now I want to have also an here now on the viewport, I want to have an additional object, a sphere, an icosphere, and I'll drag it here on the side. And now I want to have the effect so that around the icosphere, the ground should rise up a little bit. And how can I do this? I first of all need the information from our icosphere in our geometry nodes tree. So I drag the icosphere over to my geometry nodes editor and I release. And now I have the object info. Don't forget to set it to relative. So it takes the current position and not the original position. Now I want to have the distance from our icosphere to the geometry of my mesh. So the grid. And so I need the proximity of my icosphere. And now I have here outputted the distance and I can use it again with the set position node. And by combining the X, Y, Z, I can all, I can only use the Z axis. And now you can see something's happening, but let's, but let's hire up the amount and let's also use a color ramp to define better the contrast like this. And let's reverse the whole thing like this. And now you can see if I move this here, you can see it reacts to the distance of my object. So let's connect again our orig original mesh. 
let's go back into the menu and the next thing is the geometry to instance and this will be used together with the instance on points node and this node just converts your geometry to an instance and an instance is way faster and an instance is way faster than geometry so we can take for instance a mesh primitive a cone and we can drag it directly into the instance and we can check here in, on the timing it takes 0.11 milliseconds and if we will use the geometry to instance it takes under 0.1 milliseconds so this just makes the geometry to an instance which is then way faster so the next node is the join geometry and this is a very fundamental node because this just joins several meshes, several ge geometries together. So you can join it here also with, for instance, a cube that is now here. And you can join it with an UV sphere, for instance. And we can transform the UV sphere so it gets up. This node joins everything together and it has endless sockets here to join everything. The next node is the merge by distance node. And this node is self-explanatory. This node merges every vertex, every face, whatever you select here. It merges this together by a given dis distance. So if two vertices are under the given distance, they will get merged to one single vertice and if I drag this up here you can see those two vertices here are closer together those two here so they will get, get merged first and this way you can merge your objects by a given distance. It's a little bit small up here sorry <laughs> and the next node is the raycast node and this is a very interesting node. And for this we can, so here in the viewport, we want to create another plane and we want to drag it above our object and scale it up. And now on our plane, let's create a new geometry nodes tree. And we want to have the information from our original mesh. So we grab our original default cube. <laughs> this was once the default cube and set it to relative. And we want to have the information from our raycast node. So let's just grab it here, connect it like that. And now we want to have a set position node because we want to change the position of our plane. And don't forget to subdivide the mesh a bunch of times. This node just sends rays down from our plane. And those rays contain several informations. They contain if something was hit the hit position, the hit normal, how long the ray took to travel and the attribute it hit. We want to connect the hit position to our offset and this way we can see the position from our object from our object gets transferred to our plane and, and we can also change the plane position and we can see how it affects. So let's move on with the next notes which are the sample index and the sample nearest nodes. Those are a little bit together because they were originally the transfer attribute node, which was located in the attribute submenu, but now they are split and they are in the geometry submenu. So for this, I want to have the Suzanne monkey and we want to have a new geometry node tree now I want to have also a mesh primitives uh, cube, sorry. And now I want to swap between those two meshes and merge them a little bit. How can I do this? I can pull the cube positions. And for this, we will be needing in the geometry submenu the sample index node. And with this node, we can grab an attribute from our cube and we can put it onto our Susan monkey. And for this, we want to have the input position 
of our cube vertices and don't forget to set this to a vector and we want to have this into the value and the geometry should of course be the cube and now to change the position of our monkey we want to use the set position node and at first let's plug the sample index into the offset and now we can see it shifted and let's look where it shifted join geometry let's join our cube back in sorry our cube <laughs> like this and we can see it. let us just scale down our monkey a little bit this monkey is now here at the bottom why is it at the bottom so if we will look here at the sample index node this node does now take the position from our cube from the index 0 and the point of the index 0 is here at the bottom so here we get now outputted the position from our cube for the index 0 or the vertice that has the index 0 and that is here on the bottom the index 1 would then be here and so on and so forth but we now want to have every vertex on this mesh mapped to our monkey how can we do this we can say okay first of all let's delete our transform node here and let's plug this into the position and we want to mix it with the original position like this and don't forget to set it to vector and we want to have the original position here also so we can mix between those now we don't want to have one index we want to have all indexes of our cube in the near of our monkey how can we do this we can do this with with a second node the ge geometry submenu the sample nearest we can now plug this in between here and take the cube and now we will be sampling the nearest points that are on our monkey so let's look here so for instance this point here will now affect maybe those points because it is nearer on those points than this point this will affect this region and this is what this node does so it looks so this point is the most closest to those points and this point is the most closest to this points on our monkey and now we can use this into our index and now we can see we are now using every point of our monkey and turning it into the position of our cube and this is what those two nodes do let's move on with the separate components node and this just separates the type of objects you have so if you have for instance if you have joint distribute points on your faces and you've joined them together like this you have points and you have your original mesh and you can separate those two components afterwards by the mesh and by the point cloud and if you have more types you can also separate them so curve volume and instances and this is just a, sim a simple and very basic node and the next node is also separate geometry so here you can use a mask to define to define how you want to split your object so for this we can again use a noise texture as a mask and we can use the factor into the selection and let's use a color ramp set to constant and let's subdivide our mesh so we can actually see what's going on so let's give it some resolution here now we can see we have the first separation of our object and then we have the second separation which is the inverted one and if we join those two together it should give us the original mesh when you set it to faces the next node is the transform node which is very very simple with this node you can move your object on the x y and z location you can rotate your object in every single axis and of course you can also 
scale your object however you want to. I think this note doesn't need more explanation because the next note is the set ID note. So this note apparently is a note that you'll never be using. This just fills the ID attribute on the input geometry. You will never use it. So let's move on to the last, which is the set position note. And we've already covered this. So let's do one more example. So let's use a, a grid again and let's subdivide it 100 times each. And let's use a combine XYZ node as the offset. And we want to use a noise texture for the Z. And if we will scale this up, you can see what's going on here. We have a displacement. We have a displacement here. And we can also define the contrast with a color ramp like this. And you can set it to East. And with that, you can make nice effects like some crazy mountains like this. And yeah, this was pretty much all the notes. Uh, thank you all for watching. If you want to support me or if you are searching for materials, you can of course always check out my Gumroad page. There I have a material pack and some other things you can watch there if you want to. Otherwise, thank you all for watching. Have a nice weekend and don't forget to subscribe. See you later. Bye.